Hey everyone, my name is Gene and I'm here to talk about my weight loss journey. Now I'm 52 years old and uh, I've been battling weight for quite a few years and that means I've gone on a lot of diets. I've actually lost a lot of weight but I've always gained it back, always with a few extra pounds by the way, which seems to be the uh, way most people go. You lose weight, you gain it all back plus a few extra pounds. Anyway, um, back in 2015, November of 2015, actually, I uh, weighed an all-time high of 315 pounds. Now, I hate really admitting that, but that's the reality of the situation. I gained a lot of weight, and I hit an all-time high of 315 pounds. I then decided to, uh, after after being depressed about it for a few months... I decided to go on a diet. I thought, oh, I'm really going to hit it this time. I'm going to, I'm going to do my best. And I did do my best. I really did do, do good in terms of losing weight. I lost 40 pounds. And I wound up, because of some life issues that happened, I wound up stopping the diet and gained back a few pounds. But I didn't gain back all of it. And I certainly didn't gain extra weight as a result of it. And I'll explain that why in a little, in a little bit. So anyway, I, gained, I lost of this 40 pounds and then some in, some issues in life started happening one was my mother got di got diagnosed with glioblastoma which is a very aggressive and brutal brain cancer um two weeks after she was diagnosed she passed away so i had to drop everything that i was doing and focus on my mom and her last days on this planet so you know sitting in a hospice and or a, a hospital and then a hospice and then Having to arrange for a funeral uh, was not fun. It was rather stressful. And it was hard to basically maintain a diet or an exercise program while you're worried about your, your mother passing away. After that was all done for, uh, took care of the funeral and all that, um, I got back to home and promptly went and injured myself. And I had the hurt my back and got some soft tissue damage, which took a while for me to recover from. It was about three months. Uh, really, really banged myself up pretty bad. So no exercise for me. And then after that, you know, some other little things happened. And, uh, but during that time, I managed to maintain my, lose a couple pounds and maintain that weight. And how I was able to do it, maintain that was, after my mom was diagnosed and was put into hospice, I had a lot of time on my hands sitting next to my mom in the hospice. And so I'd go on my phone and started Googling uh, the glioblastoma. One of the things was I was actually very concerned that perhaps this form of cancer would be genetically inherited. I thought, you know, is this something that's going to happen to me? So I thought, well, geez, maybe I should look into this and maybe there's ways I could help, you know, minimize my chances of getting such a cancer. And what it led me to a few interesting factoids I wasn't aware of before. One was cancer is fed by sugar. Now, my mom was a big fanatic for a particular name brand, very famous uh, soda. Some people say it's a choice of a new generation, but uh, it's not Coca-Cola. But anyway, she was a huge fan of it, drank lots and lots and lots of it. And uh, yeah, it was a bad life decision she made, but you know, the average person doesn't think about these kinds of things and she was no exception. I mean, I never thought about it, so I, I couldn't tell her, don't do this. Don't drink the soda. Don't eat this kind of crap. You know, it's going to, it's going to hurt you in the long run. I just never thought about that. So, uh, so sugar. Yeah, I was, I'm a sugar fiend. Well, I was a sugar fiend. And, uh, so that kind of scared me. I'm like, oh geez, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to um, have cancer. You know, I'm going to feed my cancer. It's going to go out outrageous in my system if I keep eating sugar. Then I started learning about things. Now, I don't know the exact pronunciation of it, but it's cell ap apoptosis. I think that's how you pronounce it. Where uh, when, you're, when the cancer or the tumor is exposed, does not, is not being fed with sugar, and if you're eating a higher fat, a higher fat diet, your cells will actually kill themselves. They'll die. So that's why a lot of people have uh, shrinking tumors or their cancers disappear completely. So that really kind of blew my mind. 
So low sugar, no sugar, low carb, high fat, that's a ketogenic diet. And so I started looking into it more and I began to experiment around with it, kind of dabble with the ketogenic diet. And I, I, uh, I believe that by dabbling around in that, uh, is that, that's the way I was actually able to lose a, a, a small handful of pounds and actually maintain that weight instead of gaining it all back and a few extra pounds. So I, I credit that for preventing myself from gaining all the weight back plus a few extra. So, uh, but like a lot of things, like a lot of things in life, you know, that got put on the back burner because the previously mentioned injury and some other issues. Well, uh, I'd say around uh, October of 2017, last year. This is the day I'm recording this is Sunday, January 21st, and it's about uh, 6.15 p.m. So anyway, uh, last year, last autumn, uh, I was kind of confronted with, with facts that, you know, hey, dude, you're letting yourself go. And um, my wife kind of said that to me. Actually, she kind of said it to me. She uh, pretty much said it out loud. No, <laughs> no doubt about what she said. And some friends and acquaintances also said the same thing. Like, dude, you you don't look like the kind of per the person that we remember. Um, you 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 don't care about how you look. You don't dress, you know, like you care about anything. You know, you've gained a lot of weight. You look bloated. You look depressed. Uh, you look like you're you're sick. And it's like, you know, it's true. It really was true. You know, I used to like put some some level of pride in how I dressed and things of that nature. So, you know, I kind of just really slacked off. I wound up having to move from Southern California to Seattle for work. And I've been up here by myself for a while, um, waiting on my wife, who's you know, got, she has employment and stuff she has to take care of down there. So I'm kind of living up by myself, which means, hey, I can eat anything I want because I don't have anybody watching over me. So it's like going out for fast food constantly, really bad food choices. And then, hey, if there's nobody around, I have to impress. So I can dress however I want. So <laughs> I look, some people called me a hippie lumberjack. It was really pretty bad. I won't get into it. But yeah, I uh, my standards on a lot of things in life went and dropped down the toilet. So, you know, being, being uh, confronted with this was a kind of a wake-up call for me as well, in addition to my mom's uh, cancer diagnosis. Oh, one other thing I forgot. Um, there's a possibility I have a uh, meningioma on my spine. It's a tiny little, like less than one centimeter little tumor. Um, so that's another reason, too, is that, you know, I want to shrink the tumors, so I'm going to go on a ketogenic diet and get my life in order. Um, I've been told it's, it's benign. It's, it's nothing to really worry about, but it's something to, to, you know, it's in the back of my mind. So anyway, uh, yeah, 52 years old, uh, people are telling me you let yourself go. My health isn't the greatest. Um, my mom passed away from cancer and it comes down to the small things in life as well. You know, I go take a shower in the morning and I lose breath just taking a shower. You know, it's, it's, it's insane when, you're toweling off from the shower and you're like out of breath. You're like, ah, ah. it's like, that's insane. I shouldn't be doing that. Um, not sleeping well at night. I would just wake up constantly. I just could not sleep a good sound night. Uh, acid reflux, you know, I had like chronic acid reflux constantly bother me. But ever since December, when I started in on this weight loss, uh, this new uh, weight loss regime, lifestyle regime change, actually. It's not just weight loss, it's lifestyle change. Um, I don't have acid reflux anymore. I haven't had acid reflux in over a month. Um, I have never slept more sounder than I ever have in my life. Well, well at least recent memory. That's I'm kind of being a little... <clears throat> overly dramatic on that. But yeah, I sleep really well at night. If I wake up, it's like once a night and uh, that's it. And I'm fine with that. You know, it's not um, something I'm suffering from. It's just, you know, a lot of people like wake up for maybe a, a few minutes at night and go right back to sleep. So that's what I do. Generally though, I sleep throughout the night. Uh, so my, so better sleep, no acid reflux. I don't breathe heavily in the shower anymore. Uh, 
I just don't. You know, I get out of the shower. I've got lots of energy. Um, yeah, I mean, my stamina is increasing. Now, I've got a long ways. To, I've got still got a long ways to go. Um, I previously said that I had lost 40 pounds and I gained a few pounds back. I I gained, yeah, I gained a few pounds back and, uh, I'm using the 315 pound, uh, as my, I'd say my benchmark. So right now I'm counting kind of a double, double thing. I'm counting how much weight I've, I've lost since December, early December. And I'm also counting how much weight I've lost from my all time high. So I'm just a hair away from losing, getting back to my initial 40 pound weight loss. So I'm just like three pounds away from it right now. So I'm, I'm doing good on that. I've lost like 22, 23 pounds since early December. I'm doing it slowly uh, because of two reasons. One is weight loss for me has always been an up and down thing. Yo, yo, up and down, up and down. And I tend to lose weight really, really fast when I do that. And that's unhealthy. You know, it puts stress on your heart. And when you, if you fall off the diet wagon, you can rebound really, really hard because it, it damages your, your metabolism. Well, I don't want to do that. I've got scientific papers. I've got resources. I've done research. So I'm coming into this with more knowledge. And I think that's very important to have knowledge before you even start to do anything. And so I realized that you know, I need to heal my metabolism. I need to minimize the chances of my rebounding uh, from a heavy weight loss and going back to the way I was. So, excuse me. So I'm doing this very deliberately, slowly and deliberately. So uh, previously, I would have lost 20 pounds in a month. Well, it's been well over a month and I've only lost 22 pounds and I'm happy with it. Now, I've got a lot more to go. I mean, I've got a lot more to go. Um, luckily I'm six foot, so I can carry my weight a little bit better than other people. Um, but still, you know, I still got a gut, you know, that's, that's where all, most of my weight seems to reside is, is in my trunk area. And so, but people are noticing that my stomach is shrinking, which is a good thing. I appreciate that. So yeah, slowly, deliberately, I don't want to bounce back from it. If something, God forbid, happens that I... I uh, stop dieting or stop working out. I don't want to rebound. And I don't want to damage my my heart. I don't want to damage my metabolism. So that's a prime, uh, it's a prime concern of mine. Um, I've been going to the gym as well. Uh, I started working out here and there, just kind of dabbling, trying to get myself back into the groove of things. You know, when you're overweight, you don't want to like, tax yourself too much. You know, the first few times I went to the gym, I thought I was going to drop, drop of a heart attack, which isn't fun. But, you know, I, I know, you know, I have to work through it. But now I'm working myself up to where I'm more than just a couple times a week. I've got to three times a week. And now I'm getting into four times a week. And, uh, and I'm starting to go in the morning instead of in the evening because I figure, well, a lot of people, when they go to the gym, uh, they do it in the evening, but they tend to fall away from going to the gym because after a long day of work, dealing with the kids, paying bills, all this other stuff, going to the store, the, one of the last things you want to do is go to the gym afterwards. You want to just go home, chill out, decompress from the, and de-stress from the day. And you know, I'm like that too. I don't want to go anywhere after I get home. I don't want to deal with the masses of humanity and uh, deal with all that. I just want to chill out, relax, um, decompress, de-stress from the day. And, uh, and also on a more practical note, you know, the gyms for, at least for me and my experience tend to be really crowded in the evening. You know, it's hard to get onto certain machines. You got to wait, you know, when I get in a rhythm, I just want to keep going and going and going. I don't want anything to distract me or interrupt me. And I'm fine when I go early in the morning, there's hardly anybody there. I have a choice of any machine that I want to use. The traffic is non-existent. And when I'm done, you know, I just come back to my apartment. I take a shower, get ready for work, go to work. I've got energy to burn the rest of the day. It's, it's, it's an amazing feeling. Now, 
you know, there's also something to be said about working out in the evening because you can boost your metabolism throughout the nights and all that stuff. But you know what? I'd rather just do it in the morning, get it done and over with and have that energy throughout the day. So yeah, another thing I'm doing is intermittent fasting. This is a new, relatively new thing for me. Uh, I learned about three weeks ago of intermittent fasting and I started looking into it. I thought, wow, this is something that I could really utilize. I, most people don't realize just how much they eat in a day, not just calorie wise, but in terms of volume of food and how often they eat the food. You know, a lot of people, as soon as they wake up, you know, the first thing they do is go into the kitchen, make a little breakfast or, a, or a, a shake or something to start off the day. And then they go to work, you know, maybe they'll stop off at a Starbucks or a Dunkin' Donuts or something and pick up something, bring it in, or somebody's brought some donuts in, they're in the break room. So you grab a couple donuts before you go to your desk. And then you're snacking throughout the day. You got your lunch and all of that. Maybe uh, some people want to go out to go out for lunch. So you get like a, you know, a hamburger or nachos or whatever. And then you go home, you eat a dinner then, and maybe after that a snack before you go to bed. That's a lot of food to be eating. And then I realized after learning about intermittent fasting, you're just basically minimizing the amount of time you eat. So what I'm doing right now is a 16-8, which means I fast for 16 hours, and then I have an eight-hour window where I go ahead and eat. Now, for me, that means I stop eating at 6 p.m., and then I don't start eating again until 10 a.m. the next day. Now, I've realized that when I eat in the morning, it wasn't because I was truly hungry. It was because it was just a habit of mine or because it was a social thing. You know, somebody at work brought some donuts. Hey, somebody brought donuts. Everybody's like, oh, good. They all run in and grab a donut and stuff. Kind of like, you know, a herd of people running to get their food. And I realized when I, when I really looked at it, um, I don't really start getting truly hungry until about roughly 10 a.m., so I thought, well, this is doable. And so I've been starting to eat at 10 a.m. And I do that every single day. I've been doing it for the past two weeks. And in the evening, I stop eating at 6 p.m. And I realize I don't need to eat past 6 p.m. I'm not really hungry. If I do eat, it's probably because I'm bored. How many people out there walk to their refrigerator, open the door, just look at it, and then close it and walk away? It's like some kind of weird habit that a lot of people have. I'm guilty of that as well. There's no need to eat that late. I mean, truly, is, any, is anybody really going to bed truly hungry? Not really. So, uh, and especially, you don't want to eat before you go to bed anyway, you know, close to your bedtime. You, I, I, I personally don't want to go to bed with a full stomach. <clears throat> so, yeah, it's totally doable. I have zero, zero hunger pangs. I have zero... Um, zero desire for sugar or carbs, things of that nature. So because I've been increasing the amount of healthy fats, which is like coconut, avocado, olive, etc., healthy fats in my diet, minimizing my carbs, I've had zero sugar cravings, zero carb cravings. Um, and with my intermittent fasting, I have zero hunger pangs. I'm, I'm completely satisfied. And I don't eat a lot of food during that eight hour period of time. I just don't. So that's a good thing, you know, and I'm trying to make, to uh, minimize the amount of insulin spikes. You know, when you eat, you're getting insulin spikes, which is one reason why you're going to gain weight. So, you know, it just seems to make sense for me. Plus, there's a lot of studies that show that, you know, your uh, mitochondria gets healed better when you are fasting. Um, your body increases human growth hormone significantly when you're intermittent fasting, which is good if you're building up lean muscle mass, which is what I'm trying to do right now at the gym. So I'm trying to, to uh, take advantage of that as well. So when I go to the gym in the morning, I'm doing it in a fasted state. So ho hopefully, uh, from what I've read and from what I understand, this will help maximize my uh, lean muscle mass building efforts. Um, and there's a few other, few other um, benefits as well. You can always Google intermittent fasting and find out more about it. But uh, So yeah, going to the gym at least three times. Now I'm aiming for four times a week. Doing it in the morning. Intermittent fasting, having a, a modified ketogenic diet really seems to be working for me. And like I said, I'm not aiming for a fast weight loss. I'm just doing it slow and steady, healthfully. And that's the thing that I think a lot of people miss out on is they want to do things. I'm going on a cruise. 
um, high school reunion, whatever. I got to lose weight really fast. That's not sustainable. It's not healthy. And you're just going to bounce back and gain all the weight back. Believe me, it's happened to me before as well. So uh, I don't care about the cruises. I don't care about the high school reunions. I just care about being able to live a long, healthy, and happy life, not just for myself, but for my family and friends as well. Um, I also believe, you know, we're all put on this earth for a reason. And I don't want to get all hippy-dippy, new agey and stuff. But, you know, if we're here for a reason, if we have things we need to accomplish, let's try and make certain that we're healthy enough that we can accomplish these things. And so I don't know what my end goal in life is. Um, maybe it's doing videos like this. Maybe it's uh, being able to show somebody. Maybe there's somebody out there, could be you, watching this, you know, maybe a guy my age who's uh, kind of feeling like down and out and I don't, what, what can I do with my life? And he sees me going like, I can identify with that. And maybe if, if I can inspire one person to uh, take those steps, maybe that's the reason I'm here. Maybe that's why I'm doing this. So uh, yeah, uh, let's try and... Uh, get our lives together. Now, speaking of getting our, our lives together, there's one thing that I want to really want to discuss real quick. This is going to be the controversial part of my video and uh, it's going to be kind of triggering and very politically incorrect, but this is something that needs to be said. You know, imagine a group of people who they all think the same, they all talk the same, they all act the same. They just go along to get along, you know, go along with the herd. Well, I've never been part of the herd. I've always been that one person in the crowd to stand up, raise their hand and say, uh, yeah, but, and I have that, you know, that little, but that little exception. And I raise up the, the, the point that may be uncomfortable for people, but that just seems to be the way I am. So this is going to be no exception. Ah, uh, it's getting late. <laughs> uh, probably going to get ready for bed soon after this video is done. Anyway, um, Fat shaming and fat acceptance. Um, yeah, I'm fat. I've been fat for a while. I still, I've, even though I've lost weight and I'm in better health than I have been for quite a while, I still got a long ways to go. So yeah, I'm fat. I'm obese. I'm medically, I'm obese. I'm not morbidly obese. I'm, I'm obese though. Uh, I just happen to carry my weight well generally, but yeah, I'm obese. And uh, you know, some people would say. Well, you should be proud of who you are. You should be, people should be accepting of, of who you are. And you should accept yourself for who you are. No, I call bullshit on that. Um, if I accept myself for who I am, I'm not going to have any motivation to change. I'm not going to have any motivation to lead a healthier, happier life. I'm going to lose my motivation for uh, leading that longer, healthier, healthier, happier life for myself and my family and loved ones. Um. I do not have a desire to die a premature death. I do not have a desire to have cancer. I do not have a desire to have heart disease. Um, no, no, I'm not accepting of that. I'm not accepting of, of a predetermined fate. Um, I'm, I'm not that kind of person and I can't accept that kind of line of thinking. And I would hope that you don't do it either. Now, I'm not saying uh, you should go out and make fun of people. I'm not saying that at all. But I think it's unhealthy uh, to place your personal feelings. Oh, my, my feelings are hurt. Placing that above dying a premature death. That's just to me is just a bizarre mentality. It's a bizarre um, priority one places in their life. I, 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 I can't accept it. I'm sorry. Actually, no, I'm not sorry. That's just the way I see it. Um, but fat shaming, however, if you can shame me all you want. It's not going to hurt my feelings at all. I don't really have a lot of feelings to hurt to begin with. You know, I've been around the block more than a few times. I've seen a lot of things. I've done a lot of things. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty hardened to that. But, yeah, if it provides a motivation for me to get my act together, shame me all you want. You can call me a pig. Hey, you know, I've ate really bad food. I've ate a lot of really bad food. I've sat on my butt for hours and hours on end watching TV or on the computer, being very sedentary. That's how I got to where I'm at right now. I was a pig. I was a sloth. You know, uh, I made really bad life choices. It wasn't something that was foisted upon me. It was just a series of really bad decisions I made in my, in my life. I own up to it. I admit it. 
And, and to some of you ladies out there and, so, and to some of you men as well who say that I am fat and I am fabulous, you know, two snaps up kind of thing. Okay, fine. Maybe you're fat and you're fabulous and, and you're worthy of respect. But let's face facts. I'm going to say something that's uh, kind of gross. It's, it's, it's kind of shocking to some people, maybe a little outrageous, but it has to be said. If you are at a point in your life where you are physically incapable due to your weight, if you are physically incapable of taking care of basic hygienic functions like wiping your butt, if you cannot do that, then you are not fabulous. You are not fierce. You, you, you basically are unable of taking care of your own life. I know that's hard. I know that's kind of shocking to some people, but... If you cannot do something as basic as that, you are not fabulous. Um, you're sick. You need help. You need to make some good life decisions. And you know what? A lot of us love you. We, we want you to succeed. We want you to lead a long, loving, help, healthy, happy life, a really fierce life, a really fabulous life. You want to be fierce? Lose 50 pounds. Lose 100 pounds. Become a better person. Live long. Defy the odds. Be a rebel. Don't give in. To Don't give in. Be a rebel. Revolt. Resist. Resist being going to an early grave. Rebel against a life of, of sickness. Rebel against a life of being able, being unable to take care of yourself in a proper way. You know, rebel against having a dying of an early death and causing all of your loved ones to lead, be sad. Do you really want your loved ones to be sad, to mourn you? That's not fabulous. That's not being fierce. That's actually kind of sad. So anyway, um, I've gone on long enough about this. So hopefully I'll do some more videos soon. Um, when I lose some more weight, I will go ahead and update everybody. If you care, if you don't care, that's fine with me as well. Uh, so take care and peace.